Liberation is the next generation of laser show software and the public beta test program will be announced on May the 9th. In this video, I'm going to tell you a bit of the backstory about Liberation and there'll also be a first look demonstration of the software. So if that sounds like something you'd be into, then stick around. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. You probably wonder where I've been for the last few months and hopefully this video will go some way <laughs> to explaining it because I've been working so hard on my new laser show software system called Liberation. And let's just get the important bit out of the way first. The public beta program will be announced on May the 9th. That's very soon, what is it? I don't even know, it's like less than two weeks away. If you wanna know about how to get on that program, then sign up to my mailing list. Details at liberationlaser.com. So where to start? Well, I've been working on Liberation now for a few years and it's built on top of my open source laser control code, OFX Laser, which is now actually 10 years old. So it's very mature. And now I'm ready to make Liberation into a commercial product and build a team around it as it grows. Even in its beta test version, Liberation is already very stable. I've tested it with 50 lasers. I've been using it in all of my recent projects. So this is software that is being used regularly and tested thoroughly to its limits. Liberation and OFX Laser is very optimized C++ code. And OFX Laser goes right back to the beginning of my career in outdoor light installations. I hadn't really started doing laser beam effects yet. I'd only really been doing laser graphics. But then I actually met some other laserists, uh, primarily Andy Stenterford and Rob Stanley. And it got me thinking about what would a modern laser beam application look like. And I started thinking about a patch editor, node-based system that you could connect blocks together to create laser effects. I built a very quick prototype of this node editor. It managed to be simple and yet also quite flexible and that was in its very embryonic stage. Astonishingly, I got the chance to do a gig for Fatboy Slim. It was a charity event here in a local venue in Brighton. So then I had six weeks to get this basic patch editor into a system that I could use at a gig. I think this was around 2019, so probably four years ago, something like that. The gig went really well. And although it was very early days, I felt like I was onto something and this software was something that I could use to express myself. And I've got a background in music production and performance. So I felt like I was starting to create software that felt like a musical instrument. <laughs> How do I explain that? Well, I suppose if you play an instrument, you're used to sort of playing along with people and being part of it and jamming around. And that's exactly what this software was doing for me, except with laser beams. Over the next few years, I got some more opportunities to try out the software. And every time I built it up a little bit more and more. First, there was a gig at the Barbican Hall with the Hackney Colliery Band. And then I did a gig at Hammersmith Apollo and also the Albert Hall, of course, with uh, Cosmic Shambles. And every time I did it, I introduced new elements into the project and I decided that I would start taking it a bit more seriously and getting it to a stage where it could be released and used by other people that aren't me. <laughs> Although most of the gigs I was using it for were charity gigs, they weren't really what I did for my day job, which was the light installations. So I never really thought that Liberation would be a professional tool for myself, but that all changed last year when I started designing laser beam shows. The biggest one so far is called Polaris and we've installed it in two or three different sites now. It's a 10 minute long show along with music that I wrote myself. It was a really good chance for me to make sure that Liberation could do the kind of quality shows that you would all expect. I describe Liberation as the next generation of laser show software. And of course, 
you know, some of that's me being dramatic, but actually there it is grounded in reality. Firstly, built on a very optimized C++ laser control engine. It generates the point stream on the fly, so you're never dealing with megabytes and megabytes of ILDA frames or ILDA points in your app. It makes everything quicker and more efficient. And I'll explain more about the details of how that works in upcoming videos. But take it from me, like hundreds of and thousands of clips of laser content can be stored in just a few megabytes and the app loads immediately lightning fast. The other thing that sets it apart is that it is constantly maintaining its state on disk. So if you close the app by accident and reopen, like none of your content or your work is lost. You just get back to exactly where you left off. So a reminder, the public beta test program will be announced on May the 9th. It's the day after the coronation. So once we've got all that nonsense out of the way, then we can get back to business. If you want to know more, go to liberationlaser.com, sign up to the mailing list and you will be notified exactly how to get on that program and get the first versions of Liberation for yourself. But for now, let's take a quick look at the software. Liberation opens in less than a second. That's including all of its content and laser settings. Here's the 3D visualizer and you can switch to output mode for setting up all your zones. All of our clips and effects are on screen here and it's very closely mapped onto the buttons and controllers on the APC40 Mark II MIDI controller. I think this direct connection between hardware and software makes for a very intuitive and expressive interface. Push a button to start a clip, then when you push it and let go, it stops. The clips are arranged into groups and each group has its own color. If you start another clip within the same group as the one that's already running, it will replace that clip. If you push and hold a currently running clip while you start a new one, the first clip locks in. Or you can just press the shift button when you're starting a new clip. Group 3, that's the pink one, is currently set to flash mode. That means those clips will only run for as long as you keep that button pressed. The clip deck itself can contain as many clips as you have memory for, and you can navigate around it using these left and right buttons to jump a page at a time, or you can use this scroll controller. I've built a patch editor so you can make your own clips. We can choose an empty slot, right click, create and edit clip, and now we're into the patch editor. This is like a node based editor. So if you're used to V4 or Notch or something like that, you'll understand this kind of data flow programming. These nodes here on the top left are your generators and you'll need at least one of those before you get any output. So we'll drag a dot in, that creates a beam or you could use a line, circle or a polygon. We also have an SVG loader and a text editor, but we won't go into those today. I actually want a triangle, so I'm going to click on the other nodes and hit the delete key to get rid of them. If you click on the cog on the top right of a node, you get access to all of its various properties. I can change the color here with this color setting and change the size. I can use the zone buttons to assign this clip into whichever zones that I want. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the visualizer shows you what it's going to look like. As well as the red triangle, I want to add some white dots into the corners. So I'm going to bring out a point generator to make a beam. There are actually a few different ways to approach this, but I wanted to show you this circular pattern generator. Notice that when you position nodes close to each other, they automatically connect. But this circular pattern generator takes whatever is passed into it and creates multiple copies of it and arranges them into a circle. And if I get the settings just right, then it matches the corners of the triangle. Save the clip and close the editor. And you'll see our new clip there in the clip deck. It's a relatively simple clip, but we can still do some pretty dynamic stuff with it by using the effects. 
The effects are mapped onto these buttons here, and you can see them on the screen there, and the faders control the amount of each effect that is applied. I'll start with this one on the right, which flashes the brightness on and off, and I can slowly bring that in. And each effect has its own parameter that can be adjusted by this rotary controller at the top. And these parameter controls adjust different things depending on how the effect is set up. In this case, it affects the speed of the flashing. Move on to the next effect along, and this is a color effect that saturates everything and you can adjust the hue using the controller. And the next one is also a color effect, but in this case it doesn't affect the saturation, only the hue. So you'll notice the white elements stay white. Going through the effects one by one, this pulses the scale. This one changes the scale horizontally. It's a rotation. This applies a sine wave to everything. And last but not least, this randomizer just turns everything into chaos. It's one of my favorite effects. I'm gonna bring up this pulsing brightness a little because I want to show you the zone delay system. I can apply a time delay between zones, making a kind of chase effect. and I can change the order to go inside out. And this delay is applied to everything within that clip, including all the effects like this rotation here. You saw earlier I can use the zone buttons to add or remove zones from the clip, but I can also use the X and Y flip buttons to change the orientation within that zone. Let's explore the patch editor a little bit more. So right click, edit clip, and we're back in our editor. I'm going to use this translation node. Notice it automatically connects to the nodes next to it. it. Takes everything you put into it and just literally moves it horizontally or vertically. I'm going to use one of the oscillators on the left to change values in my translation node. So I've got a sine wave oscillator and I've plugged it into the X position of the translate. I can adjust the extents of the movement and change the speed in bars. Oh, you can see the zone flip on those right hand zones and also the zone delay still in place. I think that looks pretty cool with the uh, horizontal movement. I want the triangle to spin around before it moves left and right. So I'm going to move this translation over and bring out the rotation node. It rotates everything around the center. And I can connect a sawtooth oscillator to get it to rotate from zero to 360. And just slow that down a bit so the rotation takes two bars. If I reconnect the translation, now you'll see the rotation happens before the movement left and right. Bringing in another sine wave oscillator, apply that to the Y position so it's now moving up and down as well as left and right. There are other oscillators as well, like the square wave and this noise oscillator. Oh, and in fact, let's replace this sine wave with a noise oscillator so you can see how it works. It can create predictable but random effects. So when we connect that to the Y position, you can see it's jittering up and down. But I can change the amount of detail in that noise to make it more or less jittery. Slowing it down also has the effect of reducing that jitter. And now, of course, that means that we have a quite a long loop. It's nice because we have a very organic movement that doesn't really repeat noticeably. Save and close and you'll see our updated clip in the clip deck. That's a very brief overview of the clip system. 
but now I wanted to switch into output mode. I wanted to make this zone editor really easy to use. This square represents the entire output of the laser, and this is where our zone is set. You can add more than one zone to any laser very easily. I wanted it to be very clear that you're seeing the entire output of one laser, no matter which zones are in it. If you need to do really fine control, you can zoom in, turn the grid off, zoom in even more. Believe it or not, I've actually had to work with zones this small in the past, particularly if you're mapping onto a building that's very far away. I'm going to turn the test patterns on. See that that zone is absolutely minuscule. And yet when we zoom in, we have very fine control over it. We can even do perspective correction. By default, it's bilinear. You can do an actual perspective correction, which is better for mapping graphics or something like that. There's also a masking system. I designed a system in liberation of alternate zones. Any zone can have an alternate zone and you can use a single button to switch to all of the alternates across your entire system. You can see here I'm adding out zones for zones four and five and moving them up out of the way. So an example of where this might be useful is, well, in my projects, I've had installations where I've been terminating into the sky. And then when an aircraft goes past, I've had to redirect all the zones onto buildings. You can see when I hit the out zone buttons, those two zones in the middle are redirected. So that's liberation. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. We're just skimming the surface of what this software is capable of. I'm going to just leave you with a little bit of busking that I did at the end of the screen recording. It was very unprepared, but hopefully you get an idea of what's possible without really any practice. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. And if I get time, I will do a video just to answer those. The beta test program opens May the 9th, Liberation Laser, sign up to the emailing list, and I'll see you on the next one.